In this cap, we will provide an overview of several important concepts and terms related to oral reading fluency. First, we'll establish the big ideas that are the basis for this content. Next, we'll define what we mean by oral reading fluency and take a closer look at each of its components. Then, we'll demonstrate why reading fluency is so important in the process of developing strong readers and what fluency instruction should look like. Keep in mind that many of these, as well as related topics like assessment, may be covered in more depth than other CAPs in this series. You should also review any key information from previous CAPs or from your textbook. The first big idea we need to talk about is that as early readers, students need to develop oral reading fluency in order to connect their phonological awareness to comprehension of text. As you can imagine, not all students will develop oral reading fluency at the same rate. There are a number of factors that can influence a student's fluent reading of any given text. Just like with the earlier literacy skills, like letter knowledge, students need practice in order to become fluent readers, but teachers can and should apply a variety of instructional strategies to support students' fluency practice. We'll explore more about each of these three big ideas throughout this cap. Now let's define the key terms that you need to know before we can move forward. First, let's define what oral reading fluency actually is. Oral reading fluency is the accurate reading of connected text at a conversational rate with appropriate prosody. It's important to note that when we're teaching and assessing oral reading fluency, we are always dealing with connected text, which means full sentences and paragraphs and not words in isolation like a list of sight words. So oral reading fluency consists of three key components, accuracy, rate, and prosody. Now let's define what we mean by each of those in terms of reading fluency. First, reading accuracy is the number of words read correctly. Being able to read a text accurately depends on both decoding ability and vocabulary knowledge. Students may have to slow down when reading orally to decode along the way, but ultimately they could still be reading with a high degree of accuracy. However, for those students, Accuracy comes at the sake of reading at an appropriate conversational rate, so reading rate is the number of words read correctly per minute. Assessing students' words read correctly per minute, or WCPM, is a really common way of measuring and monitoring reading progress, so you'll see this abbreviation a lot. Finally, there's prosody, which is just the expressiveness of oral reading or speech. This is made up of several things, like paying attention to punctuation, voice intonation, volume, and pitch. These first two components, accuracy and rate, are very easy to measure quickly and reliably, which is why they're used a lot in progress monitoring, instructional planning, and helping to identify students who may be at risk for future reading failure or possibly for a print-related disability. So you'll see these a lot referred to as oral reading fluency assessment. Teachers can also assess students' prosody or prosodic reading, but this is a little trickier than simply calculating accuracy or measuring reading rate. To assess prosodic reading, teachers use more qualitative measures like checklists, rating scales, or rubrics. Be sure to watch the cap on assessing oral reading fluency for more information on how these assessments work in the classroom. Now let's take a closer look at each of our three big ideas. First, let's take a look at the relationship between very early or emerging literacy skills like phonological awareness and oral reading fluency and how we're supposed to get from emerging literacy to actually comprehending text. You should recall that some of the first reading related skills students will develop are print awareness and letter knowledge. In typically developing students, this generally happens before the pre-K years. As a result of strong skills in print awareness and letter knowledge, students develop a deeper understanding of the alphabetic principle. That understanding is what allows students to learn decoding and encoding skills as they move into pre-K and kindergarten for most students. It's essential that students get high quality phonics instruction and adequate exposure to print even if they're not fully independent readers just yet. Decoding and phonics skills are what enable students to read fluently. The better students become at decoding, the more automaticity they have with words they see often. This means they can become fluent, strong readers and will be able to focus on comprehending what they're reading. Like most aspects of literacy, reading fluency is highly complex and multifaceted. Even in typically developing students, 
learning to read skillfully depends on high quality instruction, exposure to print, and many other factors. Take a second and think to yourself, what other factors do you think might influence students' ability to read fluently? And before we discuss what fluency instruction looks like, which of those factors you just came up with do you think teachers can control or change? As we mentioned, there are several factors that can influence a student's fluent reading of any given text. We mentioned earlier that fluency when reading connected text is quite different than fluency when reading a list of words without context. So other factors other than that might include automaticity and sight word knowledge, decoding ability and decoding speed, students' self-regulation and purpose for reading, students' motivation and engagement, and the students' vocabulary and background knowledge that they bring to the text. Another important factor here is the strong relationship between comprehension and fluency. We've mentioned before that fluency is key to students being able to comprehend what they read, but it works the other way around too. What if you had to read a passage orally in your second or third language? Would you comprehend it as well as if you were reading it in your first language? The third big idea that we're concerned with in this cap is that students do need practice in order to develop their reading fluency, but teachers use a variety of instructional strategies in order to support that practice and make it worthwhile. Like most teaching, there's a need for balance when teaching any reading or literacy skill. And with reading fluency instruction, we as teachers have to balance direct explicit instruction with providing students plenty of opportunities for guided and independent practice. So what does the teacher do in order to teach fluency? Of course, this depends on students' individual needs, but phonics and decoding instruction and teaching students how and when to use specific strategies, like using context clues, are all important parts of fluency instruction. It's also extremely important that teachers provide lots of models of good fluent reading. A lot of people believe that independent silent reading with a book that the student is highly interested in is the best way for students to get that all important reading fluency practice. You probably remember sustained silent reading from when you were in school. And that is important, but there are lots of other ways that teachers can support students' fluency practice. Many teachers use various kinds of assisted reading, like partner reading, and various kinds of repeated oral reading to help students practice. In general, teachers strive to provide fluency instruction that motivates students by ensuring a high degree of success in student practice, and that doesn't always mean independent silent reading. Teachers should also carefully select the right texts for modeling and for guided practice. And they should also teach students how to select their right texts for their own independent practice. We cover more about this and how to determine the right text in the cap on assessing oral reading fluency. Now let's review the main things we covered in this cap. We defined oral reading fluency as accurate reading of connected text at a conversational rate with appropriate prosody. We also defined each of the three components from that definition accuracy, rate, and prosody. We discussed three big ideas and explored each of them throughout this video. For the first big idea, we looked at where oral reading fluency and fluency instruction fit in the development from emergent to early literacy and eventually to comprehension of text. Then we discussed a number of factors that can influence students' fluent reading of TIC. Then we identified a number of factors that can influence students' fluent reading of different texts. We noted that while students need a lot of practice to become fluent readers, there should also be a balance between teacher-led fluency instruction and fluency practice. We also identified a variety of ways that teachers can provide varying degrees of support for students' fluency practice. And finally, we mentioned that making sure students' fluency practice is successful is a key part of the teacher's role in motivating students and building their skills in reading. That's all for this introduction to reading fluency. Thanks for watching.